servants, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord. Your word is a lamp to our feet stand for Psalm, Psalm 21st chapter of the book of Job. Job chapter 21. But God, Job answered and said, Hear diligently my speech, and let this be your consolations. Suffer me that I may speak. And after that I have spoken, mock on. 
As for me, is my complaint to man? And if it were so, why should not my spirit be troubled? Mark me and be astonished and lay your hand upon your mouth. Even when I remember, I am afraid, and tremble, trembling taketh hold on my flesh. Wherefore do the wicked live? Become old? Yea, are mighty in power. Their seed is established in their sight, with them and their offspring before their eyes. The houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of God upon them. Their bull gendereth and faileth not. Their cow calveth and casteth not her calf. They send forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance. They take the timbrel and harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth, and in a moment go down to the grave. Therefore, they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty? And we should And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Lo, their good is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out? And how oft cometh their destruction upon them? God distributed sorrows in his anger. They are stubble before the wind, and as chaff that the storm carrieth away. God layeth up his iniquity for his children. He rewarded him, and he shall know it. His eyes shall see his destruction, and he shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty. For what pleasure had he in his house after him, when the number of his months is cut off in the midst? Shall any teach God knowledge, seeing he judgeth those that are high? One dieth in his full strength, being holy at ease and quiet. His breasts are full of milk, and his bones are moistened with marrow. And another dieth in the bitterness of his soul, and never eateth with pleasure. They shall lie down alike in the dust, and the worms shall cover them. Behold, I know your thoughts and the devices which you wrongfully imagine against me. For you say, Where is the house of the prince? And where are the dwelling places of the wicked? Have you not asked them that go by the way? And do you not know their tokens, that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction? They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. Who shall declare his way to his face? And who shall repay him what he hath done? Yet shall he be brought to the grave, and shall remain in the tomb. The clods of the valley shall be sweet unto him, and every man shall draw after him as there are innumerable before him. How then comfort ye me in vain, seeing in your answers there remaineth falsehood. This is the word of God. The Lord had promised good to us, his word our hope secures. He would be our shield and portion as long as life endures. The hymn number three, page 15 for the gradual.
please sit for the New Testament reading. Hear ye the word of the Lord as it is written in the fifth chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, beginning to read at verse 21. Mark chapter 5, 21. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be well and live. And he went with him, and a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for twelve years, and who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better but gladder grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said unto him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. This is the word of God. We prepare our hearts to hear the word of the Lord as we stand to sing the hymn number 9 on page 17 of our programs.
Merciful Father, we are indeed very grateful unto you for your grace and mercies released upon us and for us to be able to gather this day before you. We are so grateful. And we ask the Lord, you will have your way even in our midst. We recognize the fact that without you we can do nothing. We ask you to speak to us, even at this moment. Let your name be glorified. May our gathering here this year not be a waste of time. But Lord, we pray that you will meet us on this mountain and bring about transformation and renewal in our lives. Speak to us in the language we all will understand to your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Can I hear a better amen? Please be seated. Beloved, we thank the Almighty God for making this conference a reality as we are here gathered today. Despite all the challenges that have befallen us in one way or the other. Last year, this program was to hold here in Port Harcourt, but because of the coronavirus pandemic, this program could not hold. And even this year, it was not certain if the program will hold or not because of the insecurity situation in our country. But beloved, God has made it possible for us to gather. And here we are for this year's All Clergy Conference. Can we give the Lord a resounding clap offering? <laughs> to him alone be the glory and honor, power, majesty, dominion, all that is worthy of his praise be ascribed unto this holy God who is higher than the highest, greater than the greatest, the one who do great wonders and has no comparison. To you alone be all the glory. Amen. Please be seated and God bless you. And sincerely from the depth of our hearts, on behalf of the Dyson Board, the clergy and faithful of this diocese of Niger Delta North, we want to especially thank our Father, the head of our church, the most reverend Henry Chikudum Ndokoba, the Metropolitan and Primate of all Nigeria. We want to appreciate him for this privilege granted unto us to host this conference this year. We say, may the Lord bless you, our Father and the Lord, and increase you on every side in the name of Jesus. I know clergymen don't like saying amen. We shout when we hear congregation to shout amen. Now you can't say amen. Can we say better? Amen. We welcome our own Archbishop, the Most Reverend Dr. Blessing Nyinda, the Archbishop of the province of Niger Delta. Your Grace, we welcome you. We want to welcome the Central Planning Committee Chairman, the Right Reverend Dr. S.O. Sowale. My Lord, you are welcome to Port Harcourt. And all others who are here, our fathers in the Lord, we want to welcome you specially and pray that the Lord will bless you. We know that by tomorrow we'll have many more persons here. We also want to appreciate the Venerable Isua Seidu, the Prolocutor. Is he around? God bless you. You're welcome. God bless you. Welcome to Port Harcourt. And we welcome all clergymen all across the nation. And know that a good number of us are not yet here. By tomorrow, many will be arriving or some are still on their way coming across the nation from the north, the south, the east, the west of this country. We welcome you and pray that your stay in Port Harcourt will be a memorable one. The amen is still going down. We pray that here where the Lord has brought you, 
the Lord will meet you here in this mountain. He will cause you to go back a different person. You will not go back the same way you came. And I want to encourage you to pay attention, be part of all the programs. Please, this is not a time for you to go visit your relatives and friends in Port Harcourt. A good number of persons do that. In programs like this, you only come on the closing day and look at the environment so they can tell stories when you go back. But that is not good. Please be here. The Lord has brought us here for a reason. And we pray that the Lord indeed will meet us. We will take our test from the theme, the theme test. I'm not doing an exposition or a talk on the theme, but this is just a welcome service. Just to point out a few things from that passage. And I'm sure those who will be talking about it from tomorrow will do a more elaborate work on it. What we are going to be doing here today is more or less what we call Sunday school theology. But from tomorrow, we will go into the deeper theology. So just follow us as we say a few things here this evening and pray that the Lord will bless each and every one of us. Please, if you don't mind, can you stand as we read that scripture together? First Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. We'll read together. I know we we'll have different translations. Media, can you put it up there? I have an IV version here. Can we read together? One to go. If you point these things out to the brothers, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus, brought up in the truth of the faith and of the good teaching that you have followed. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. We're going to read that same passage from the New Living Translation. It says, If you explain these things to the brothers and sisters, Timothy, you will be a worthy servant of Christ Jesus, one who is nourished by the message of faith and good teaching you have followed. Just a little background. About the tail end of Paul's apostolic ministry, a serious disruption was troubling a long established Christian church. And what was the problem? Some church leaders had become false teachers. Paul had warned the church before now of the things that were to happen. So it was not a new thing to them. And this we can see in Acts chapter 20, verse 29 to 31. Please can you put that up for us? Acts chapter 20. Verse 29 to 31. It's like the media, they are not doing that for us today. Acts chapter 20. I'd like to read that scripture to us. Just three verses. Media, you are, you are lagging behind. Please change that battery and return that one. That one is better. I read from NIV version. It says, 
verse 29 to 31. I know that after I leave, Paul was saying, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and deter the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years, I have never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. So Paul made it very clear to them that by the time he will leave, a lot of strange things will begin to happen. And now their impact was strengthening the life of the church and the well-being of the community. And Paul needed a skillful person to restore order in God's household. So he gave this task to no other person than to Timothy, his beloved son and disciple. Now, Timothy was not ignorant about the church in Ephesus. He was not ignorant about it because he had accompanied Paul in one of his missions there. And as a young man, Timothy had faced so many challenges. He had lots and lots of pressures, a lot of conflicts and challenges from the church and his surrounding cultures, just as we have them today. We'll be able to mention one or two of them. And to counsel and encourage Timothy, Paul sent his very personal letter to him. We are told that this letter was written at about AD 64, probably just prior to his final Romans imprisonment. Because he already had appealed to Caesar, Paul was sent a prisoner to Rome. This you can find in Acts chapter 25 to 28. Now, for us to be able to make something out of this text we have read this evening, it will be very important and needful for us to look at it because verse 6, Paul said, if you point out these things to your brothers, New Living Translation says, your brothers and your sisters. Now, what is he going to be pointing out? Or what are we to be pointing out? Look at verse 1 of that chapter 4. It says, the Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits. And things taught by demons, such teachings come through hypocritical liars, whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from food or certain foods which God created. To be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good. And nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. Because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. Now, for the efficient church, men and brethren... It was not the situation we have today. But for them, in the Ephesian church, they had members, like Paul said, elderly people. People who were strong in the faith of the church, they have decided the church. And now they are bringing their own teaching to contradict the scriptures. There were some Greek philosophers. They thought that the body was evil. And that his soul is only what mattered. They refused to believe that the God of creation was good. Why? Because his contact with the world had already contaminated him. And they said that how can Jesus claim to be God and also claim to be man? 
and this was what they were teaching then that is not possible that God is so holy God is so good that he does not have any business with this mortal that is full of wickedness and evil and Paul knew that if this teaching continues and is left unchecked it will greatly distort the Christian truth brethren because of time this service is just for one hour in our own time, are there things that are there contradicting the scriptures? Thank God we have pastors, leaders of the church, ordained men who lead the church, who ought to know the truth, teach the truth, nurture people, disciple people, so that they will be strong and prepared for heaven. Are there things, strange teachings, and things that we we'll see around us today in our own time? There are very many, many of them. But we'll just point out a few of them. I'm sure those who are going to talk about this will take time to tell us many more things about it. One of it is what is Titan. Today in our time, I have had people over and over say, with impunity and with all amount of boldness, that tithe is not scriptural. That if you are paying tithe, that the tithe is collected by the pastors and pastors are criminals. But one thing that pains my heart is that the Anglican priests, most times, some of them are also as vulnerable as our members. Some of the teachings we hear from maybe it does not matter whom the person is, how highly placed the person is in the, in the world. What will suffice is the scriptures. It's not man-made ideology or what you feel. Some of us will swallow this hook, line, and sinker and begin to even teach this to our members. That titan is an Old Testament practice and is no longer in vogue now. That is a lie from the pit of hell. It is not true. It is not factual. And the Bible did not say such. And I'm sure that a good number of us know what we are talking about. I won't go deep into all. We'll just mention a few and we're going to pray. Number two. Not too long ago, I don't know what's happening in your own dioceses, but it happened here. It came to this area, but by God's grace, we fought it, and I think that thing, uh, I don't think it's working again this area. If you're wearing earring, necklace, bangle, you're going to hell. You're already in hell. Is it happening in your own area? Did it get there? They're looking at me as if they're not seeing me. Did it get to your own area? It got here. And so many clergymen became advocate of it. That if you wear earring as a woman, you wear necklace, and you wear bangle, that this is what the Bible, that God, Moses, sorry, Aaron, that is what Aaron used to mow the golden calf. And if anybody is still doing this, and God said nobody should wear that again. So if you wear it, in short, you forget about heaven, just wait for hell until when the time comes. Teachings that I don't know where they get, they're getting it from. And there were some video clips that were flying that time of testimonies of people who went to hell, came back because they were hearing. That is not true. I don't know the hell where you went to. Maybe the one, the hell is in your village. And some of them are not even Christians. Some became Christians, they said they became Christians one month after, and they start having revelation. Pastors and priests in the church of God, there is need for us to be grounded in the word. We are in a very dangerous time, and we pray that these teachings will not sweep us off our feet. Some will say, and I'm sure you know, once saved, forever saved. You can do anything you like. God understands. That's another teaching that is going on now. And we learn them from the Pentecostals. Once you are saved, you can collect somebody's wife, no problem. God understands. You can even speak in tongues, no problem. God understands. Once saved, forever saved. I don't know whether they read some of the scriptures. The Bible says if a, if a righteous man turn away from his righteousness, that all the righteous things he has done will be what? Is it your Bible? It's not in their own Bible. 
And they're telling me that once you are saved, you are saved. So you can do anything. You can tell lies. You can deal with people anyhow. And you get away with it. You have been saved. And you are bound to go to heaven. The next one is infant baptism. This one is still a problem. I will not forget some years back, even in this diocese, we had a situation where even pastors were saying they don't believe in it. And I'm sure there could be people who are seated here who, say not, who do not believe in it, even though they are here with us. And they swore to the 39 article of faith that they are going to uphold it, they will teach it, they will abide by it. You are telling lies in hypocrisy because you want the color. But when it comes to infant baptism, I, we had a pastor that worked with me one certain time. Any time that is baptism in church, he will give an excuse that he's going somewhere. But on Sunday, when the people who, after baptism on Saturday, come for church on Sunday, he will be there to receive the, all the, good, the goodies that come. And he will share it and collect. Is it hypocritical? That's what the Bible says. Hypocritical liars. They don't believe in infant baptism. And they condemn us for doing that. That why should we baptize infants? Jesus did not ask us to do that. And a good number of us are believing that. We hold that ideology very strongly. And this season of, if you don't do miracles, and there is nothing for you to show people that you are, you are a man of God, they will not come to your church. So a good number of our priests now have anointed blessed oil, Oil, blessed oil, blessed water. A good number of us are turning native doctors by the day. Because if you don't do that, you are not powerful. Special water. When you are coming to church, come with anoint, come with bottle, bottle water for cleansing. Come with oil. Come with this. There is nothing wrong with water. There is nothing wrong with oil, but the way you apply it is what matters. Don't use it because you want to get money out of people's pockets. You use it to manipulate people. Wrong teachings. What about the giftings of the Holy Spirit? There are still pastors and members who don't believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There's one pastor who said, when he says speaking in tongues, he says stop that. We're speaking in tongues. He said, there's nothing like that. That these people use this to deceive somebody. There are still pastors who don't believe in prophecy. They don't believe in the giftings of the Holy Spirit. And some of them go ahead to teach it to our members, even in church. I pray that in this conference, God will open our eyes. Because we need to be prepared. We are going back to face challenges. We are in a time when a lot of teachings are going on, just like Paul was saying to Timothy. If you know these things, you will be able to teach these people and deliver them from their errors. But if the man who is to teach is also contending with it, what will he teach? If a pastor with color trained in Omar here, trained in Oka, trained in Vinings, trained in uh, Bukuru, or wherever. And you come, you are supposed to be teaching people the word of God, and you are teaching the contrary. You become a disciple of the devil. What about the cultural practices? A lot of things are happening now because of wanting people to fill up our churches, a good number of us are allowing some things to creep into the church gradually. We are now fraternizing and allowing some things which by nature and by, the, by, 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 by clarity, what, is, what you are practicing is syncretism. The Catholics allow masquerade to the church. They pour it water and bless it. The masquerade is a Christian. All you need is to baptize the masquerade and the masquerade will become a child of God. 
Our Anglican brethren are now beginning to toe that line because maybe their own church is getting fuller than our own. Men and brethren, God is not looking for numbers. Am I talking to somebody here? If there are faithful persons, five that are going to heaven, God is happier. It's not a multitude in your church. That is why a good number of us these days are not preaching the truth anymore. All we do is to massage people's ego in the church. When a man who is a big man comes to your church, you change your sermon, change your message, massage his ego very well, so that at the end, all you are looking for, if he can give you one million or two million to build your church, what about building the kingdom and building the people? If you know these things, you will be able to teach. You will be able to correct. Some of the cultural dance we, we allowed in the church is, I think, is, is, we, we should be very careful what we do these days. In the name of wanting to allow, to, to allow things flow. May God help us. May God deliver us. There are areas where when there is a traditional practice, they will tell the church you won't hold any program until we finish. We have a lot of things to contend with. But when we make laws, they will not obey it. But when they make theirs, we obey. There was a time when people would finish wedding in church. I'm sure you see happiness of areas. People will come to church after blessing, after blessing their marriage, holy matrimony, they will go remove their wedding clothes, wear their traditional attire, and go back for traditional marriage. After wedding in church, they will now go back, remove the wedding gown, remove the suit, now wear their, wedding, their traditional attire, go back, and now do, do, carry wine, looking, looking for their husband. So the one you presented in the church is who? And the pastor will accept it because you are looking for 5,000 naira envelope. May God deliver you in the name of Jesus. We need to settle a lot of things here and resolve matters so that as we go back some of the things we do we do no more. Time will fail us. I need to begin to round up. There's no way we can point out these things to our brothers and sisters if we are confused ourselves. How can a preacher be preaching what he does not believe? It's not possible. If you know that you are not called, please resign and go back home. We were in school in Oka so many years ago. I'm sure some of my colleagues are here. We were in class and somebody raised his hand. I won't forget it. Till the day I die. He asked the lecturer, where is heaven? I looked at turned and looked at him. He said, where is this heaven? People are talking about where is this heaven? And this is a man who is to be ordained to become a preacher. Ah! We have anointed demons, so we have laid hands on demons and, and, and ordained them. No wonder we have a lot of catastrophe in church. When a man is asking, where is heaven? Beloved in Christ, we are gathered in this holy convocation to have a spiritual checkup in our lives. Are we helping those we are leading as pastors to discover the truth? Or we get them more confused? We must not forget that we have an account to give as stewards called into this holy vocation. As I read this passage, say close. Don't forget. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 11 says, can you put that up quickly? Don't wait for me to open again so that I'll close. Second Corinthians. I think this people, I don't know what is your problem this evening. By the time I open now, they will open it. They will put it there. Don't open it again for me. I'm not going to look there again. Are you there now? Is that, which translation is that? NIV. Can you put up King James? King James Version. That's good. What does it say there? 
Knowing therefore the terror of of who? What do we do? Brethren, we must persuade men. But we are not made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences because of the terror of God. The Lord Jesus is coming back again. Those people committed into your charge, into your hands. Anywhere God has sent you to pastor, you are there to prepare them because of the return of the master. You are a man whose souls, people's souls are in your hands. That is why we pray that those who will be speaking to us in this conference, God will use them. And may we not have critical minds as we have. It is not easy to teach clergymen or to speak to them. Because as I'm speaking here now, some of them are looking at my theological and uh, systematic and uh, my, if my, my, uh, my, 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 my what, is, is, is correct? If it is not correct, they are, that's what they are pointing at now. Please forget it and listen to what God is saying to you here. So that you don't go back the same way you have come. If you have come here with a pen to look at where somebody did not put his T and cross it and put I for the person, you are going here a failure. All the money spent, the time and energy you have put in here is a waste of time. But open up your heart here. And may God meet you here. Go back as a different person. And meet your congregation. Let them see that something new has happened to you. We pray that God will help each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We pray you help us in this holy convocation, in this gathering. Father, we pray that you will meet us. Lord, speak to every heart. We have come here. We are hungry. We are thirsty. Lord, we desire that you, you reach out unto us because the tasks ahead of us, they are enormous. We have lots and lots of challenges. People are looking up to us. They have heard that we have come for retreat. They are waiting like the sons of prophets. Waiting to see Elisha come back. To see what we are carrying. If you come back empty, it shall be a disappointment. May we not go back empty. Deposit something in us. In this mountain. And let your name be glorified. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We thank very much our Father in God for that message. The high point of this message is that the scripture supersedes every and any human teaching and doctrine. As we remain standing, we reaffirm our faiths with the words of the Apostles' Creed.
us Mercifully receive, O Lord, the prayers of your people who call upon you. Grant that they may know what they ought to do and may have grace faithfully to accomplish it through Jesus Christ our Lord. the source of all good desires, all right judgment, and all just works. Give to your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that freed from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness through Christ our Lord. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. We are still praying. And so, Father, we give you thanks and praise for it pleased you to have gathered us 
from the different parts of this country to this place. We are so grateful, Lord, to you because you preserved our lives. We are grateful, Lord, to you that in the midst of the turbulence and the pestilences, Lord, that you have preserved us. We were supposed to have gathered here last year, but we were unable to do so because of the COVID crisis. And Lord, we are grateful because you've preserved our lives and we are here today. And this conference is a reality. Again, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that in the midst of the insecurity, Lord, we have in this country, you've been faithful and you've preserved us. We thank you, Lord, that in the midst of the intimidations that the church, your Lord, has been going through in different parts of this country, your church is marching on and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Lord, we are so grateful for our families and for what you've done for us. We are so grateful to you, Lord, for us. Johnny Macy's, Lord, granted to all travelers and those, Lord, who are here to join us. We thank you, Father, for bringing us, Lord, from our different stations, Lord, and dioceses, Lord, to this place to seek your face in this mountain. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of the, the speakers and the resource persons, Lord, that will be speaking to us in the course of this conference. And we thank you most importantly, Lord, for the gift of Jesus Christ, for whom, oh Lord, we are gathered here today. And we are so grateful. We can't thank you enough. And so, Lord, we praise our thankful gratitude unto you in this service. And say, may you alone be glorified and exalted for what you have done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Nigeria is for Jesus. Nigeria is for Jesus. Your servants are saying, Nigeria is for Jesus. Nigeria is for Jesus. Nigeria is for Jesus. Your servants are singing Nigeria is for Jesus eternal rock of ages the scripture says that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof the world and day that dwelleth therein including this nation called Nigeria as your servants, O God, we commit this nation again into your hands. The scripture says that you are able to keep everything committed into your hands. We lift up our president, Muhammad Buhari, the vice, Yemi Osibanjo, the Senate and the House of Representatives, all those in the corridor of power, the governors of the 36 states of this nation, and all the local government chairmen, even the traditional rulers will bring all before you. The heart of the king, the Bible says, is in your hands. We pray, dear Lord, that you cause these ones to do your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, arise over Nigeria, Lord. Arise over all that men are doing to frustrate your will in this nation. Lord, the Bible says that they should gather, but they will be broken into pieces. That they should take counsel, and the counsel will come to naught. That they should speak the word, and it will not stand, because God, you are for Nigeria. We enthrone you again over this nation. We ask that you have your way. Let your will and your will alone be done over Nigeria. We frustrate the plans of the wicked from, this, from Abuja, O oh God, the seat of capital, down to the listed of this nation. Lord, we frustrate the powers of hell. We come against the horns of wickedness that have arisen to scatter this nation through terrorism, through all forms of vices. We frustrate all of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Have your way in Nigeria, O oh God. Have your way in, in the heart of all them that are in the corridor of power. We enthrone you over Nigeria. Be thou exalted, be thou glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Almighty God, you have called your church out of every nation. We thank you for the gifts and calling of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion. We thank you for her leadership and the people who are led the faithful. 
We thank you, O Lord God, for how over the years you have continued to carry this church on ego's wings. We pray particularly for the leadership of this church, for Henry, our primate, for blessing the Archbishop of this province and all Archbishops in this church, for wisdom, the Bishop of this diocese and all the bishops of this church, for the clergy and for the faithful. We pray that it may please you that in their time and in our time, that the word of God will be faithfully preached and faithfully received. That the sacraments will be faithfully administered and faithfully received by the faithful. We pray, O oh Lord God, that it may please you to heal our hypocrisies, to heal our legalism, to heal the injustices and the injuries that we carry as a church that has weakened our gospel witness in the world. May it please you, O Lord of the church, that you may bring through the ministry of your Holy Spirit the needed revival, the revival that will bring about the salvation of sinners and the awakening of those who sleep, whether they are clergy or laity. We ask, O King of glory, that in our time, your church will arise. Her ministers will be effective. The members will arise. And they will do the work that has been committed into our hands as the church. And we pray, O King of glory, that as we serve you faithfully in this church and in this nation, that at all times and in all places, wherever we have been placed, that your name will be glorified, that your people will be edified, that the kingdom of darkness will remain terrified. Thank you because we know that you are able to do for us exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to your power that is at work in us. Be glorified and exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Our merciful Father, we are indeed grateful to you that you have gathered, you've gathered us together. We are congregated together in your name that you might equip and prepare us to become better ministers. We pray for as many you'll be using to minister to us, that, Lord, you fill them with your Holy Spirit, that will speak as instruments in your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, we commit those who are yet on their way, that, Lord, your presence will be with them. They shall arrive here safely and be part of what you are doing in this place. Reign in our means and be God indeed, in the name of Jesus Christ. O oh God, our Father, we thank you for loving us and for saving us through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. We rejoice in you for making us a people for your own possession and for calling us to follow you and thereby making us fishers of men. Inasmuch as without you we are not able to please, mercifully strengthen us in our calling and empower us to be faithful and effective ministers in our generation. Help us to be effective, not only in our ways, but also in our deeds. Give us the grace not to be distracted by the noise and challenges of the time, but to enable us to look only unto Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. Renew us, Heavenly Father, in the power of your Holy Spirit to work and live for you through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, you have given us grace to bring before you with one accord our common supplications, and you have promised that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come the fullness of eternal life. May we pray the grace together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit.
praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. No, can we do it better? Praise the Lord. If you know you are blessed, can you make a joyful noise to the King of Glory? Somebody celebrate Jesus. Amen. Now it is time to, for us to show our appreciation to the Lord God Almighty. You will all agree with me for those that travel, the Lord had granted us safety. And the only thing we owe him is our thanksgiving. It is rightly said that any man that learns to appreciate God has tendered an application for more things. We are going to take our offerings now as we invite the band. The band will sing. Ushers will help us. The backs will move around our seats as we give our appreciation and thanksgiving to the Lord God Almighty. You may wish to stand. Sine dangi di ma o, o nye wangi di ma Iye ni li kere ke ne nye ki e ke la e O ke ni le, mbe ni le Iye ni li kere ke ne nye ki e ke le Bo wem na si, na chi ne kangi di ma Eh, oh, di ma, oh, ye, wang, ye, di ma, ye, ni, li, ke, re, ke, ne, ye, ki, ye, ke, le, mo, wem, na, si, na, chi, ne, ka, ye, di ma, eh, oh, di ma, oh, ye, wang, ye, di ma, ye, ni, li, ke, re, ka, re, ya, ki, ye, ke, le, ye, 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 Very, very, many, many blessings. Hey, you're 
glory and honor. We invite the Archbishop, the Most Reverend Dr. Blessing Inda for other announcements and welcome of the delegates. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord! Praise ye the Lord! Alright, before I take the announcement, I would like to invite the chairman of the Central Planning Committee of the Church of Nigeria All Anglican Clergy Conference to come and welcome us with a few remarks after which the notices will be taken. Chairman, sir, the chairman is Right Reverend Dr. Samuel Sowole, Bishop of Elisha Diocese. Pray be seated. In the name of Jesus Christ, the owner of his church, and on behalf of our primate, the most Reverend Henry Ndukuba, all the archbishops and bishops of this church, all the clergy who are not here and those of us who are here, and all the lay members of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion, we welcome you today's all Anglican clergy conference of the Church of Nigeria holding in Port Harcourt between today and Friday by the grace of God. We want to congratulate you for this opportunity to be part of this program. We've been planning since four years ago, we thought it would hold last year, but it, it, it didn't. But this year also, we were praying and hoping, and here we are. We want to say 
Congratulations to you all. On behalf of all of us, we want to appreciate the chairman of the Luca Ganassi Committee, that is the most reverend blessing. I call him blessing and blessing of Ukwere. We are very grateful to you for all you have done to make sure that you are all that we are, have done here and that all that we shall do will be acceptable to God. We are grateful to you. The right and the most reverend Ayinda, you know when we were planning, he was 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 about to be elevated. God knew. And during the planning this year, God did this wonderful work. We want to say congratulations. Congratulations and congratulations. <laughs> On behalf of all of us also, we want to thank our host, Bishop. We want to thank you for your accommodation and hospitality and for the art so inspiring sermon. It's not only theological, but also educative, and it's, it covers everything we will want to hear from the man of God. We are grateful to you, the right reverend wisdom. You are really wisdom indeed. We also want to say thank you very much to the Bishop of Northern Eastern. The Bishop God sin, uh, God knows an Igbari. We are grateful that you are here to be part of the service. We appreciate all the clergy, the choir, the organist, the instrumentalists, everyone who has contributed to the success of this opening service. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. All other notices will be given by the most reverend doctor, Blessing Ayida Ukere, and uh, Niger Delta. God bless you. Thank you, Chairman. Let me also thank the Bishop of the Diocese of Niger Delta North and his team of clergy for leading this service on behalf of the province of Niger Delta. I want to thank Bishop Ambare for coming to assist. God bless you all. If you are clapping, clap very well. Don't hold your clapping. Um, we are all mature and responsible clergy in this house. So, it's expected that as soon as you picked up your program, you would have branched through to know what is in there, to know what to do and what not to do. So we are not going to be talking about all these things, but I need to emphasize to you that we will try as much as possible to follow the timing as we have it on the program. So if you are sleeping and thinking that somebody will wait for you, nobody will wait for you. Maybe before you come here, we would have said, may the Lord be with you, and then you go back home. What am I trying to say? Try to keep to time. That's important. And if you look on page six of the program, you would have seen all the rules that you are supposed to observe as you participate in this conference. And uh, let me inform you that tomorrow, the leader of our church, 
the Archbishop, Metropolitan and Primate of all Nigeria, will be here to address us as he declares the conference open. So please make sure you don't meet that aspect of the conference. Please, we are not doing any registration in this conference venue. Registration was completed and closed on 18th of August. And so if you have registered and picked up your tags, you will only be admitted into the conference with your tags on. If you don't have your tax, they will ask you to go away. It means you didn't register. And whatever excuse you may have will not be admitted at this point in time. So the best thing to do is to respect yourself and keep off and wait for the next four years or five years. Or you follow the conference is being transmitted live by our television house, ACNN. And it streamed live online through the ACNN Facebook, YouTube, Avo TV, and other channels. So you can stay out there and watch through these channels and you will meet, not miss anything. Also, you know the situation we find ourselves now all over the world. We are in the era of COVID-19. Please, may I inform you that we were warned by the state government. They are aware of our gathering here. And they warned us to ensure that we follow the COVID-19 protocols. So please, always wear your, is it mouth cover or nose cover, whatever you call it. Make sure you wear it, not on your chin, but cover your nose and your mouth. Also, we have... Uh, water and sanit uh, hand sanitizers around the compound. Make sure you do the washing and cleansing regularly. Or you advise to acquire your own personal bottle or kunkum or kunkum of sanitizer and put it in your pocket so that you can bring it out and clean your hands. Please. Also, considering the sec security situation we are talking about, you are not in Portugal to begin to loiter about. Please, if you have come for this conference, make sure you are in this uh, conference. If anything happens to anybody outside here, we will not account for you. So, from wherever you are uh, residing to the conference and back to that place, maybe some other time you want to come for shopping or to, for sightseeing, you can take another holiday. But if you came for this conference, please ensure that you are here within the conference venue. To avoid had I known. Um, the Compass magazine, am I right? Compass. The Compass magazine, a magazine of the House of Clergy of the Church of Nigeria, will be launched here on Wednesday during lunch time. Please ensure that you keep something to make sure you support that work. Um, one of the things I know every clergyman will want to go home with in a conference like this is to acquire some books. Please, we have these books that I have to introduce to you now. We have Evangelism Made Easy. Can you tell me who wrote this? Who? Good. Archbishop Adeleye, he wrote Evangelism Made Easy. He wrote Follow Up Made Easy. And he wrote Pastoring Made Easy. Everything made easy, made easy. Therefore, ensure that you pick this book, at least to encourage that servant of God and to have some books in your library and to acquire some knowledge. I don't know how much, but that, they'll be sold somewhere around the corner there. You can go and pick some copies. And please, it's a spiritual gathering, a gathering of spiritual people, where we are connected with God. Please, don't forget to pray. Apart from these corporate prayers we pray during services in your own closet, please pray for this conference. Why do we have to emphasize this and why do we have to pray? Some of you may have seen me move up and down from the conference, from the this thing. I got an information through a text 
that some of our brethren coming from Asaba were involved in an accident. That nearly disorganized me there now. But fortunately, to the glory of God, we don't have any casualty. None of them was hurt. The Bishop of Sapele and that Bishop of, Asa of uh, 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 Bendel are there settling. They, they clashed with a trailer. All this, uh, the owners of Nigeria, you know, covering the road and all, causing troubles for here and there. So they're trying to settle. But, but please, this means that we have to pray harder and pray well so that we can finish this conference without any negative story. On this note, we want to thank you again. If there are more things, we can do to inform you from tomorrow. Thank you and God bless you. May we rise up. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, to whom all desires known, to whom no secrets are hidden, we thank you profusely for how you have started this all Anglican Lady Conference here in the Dallas of Niger Delta North. We thank you because this conference was built to hold last year. Because there is time for everything. We shifted it to this year. And here we are. And therefore we are thanking you. Father, I also thank you for the head of our church, His, His Grace, the Most Reverend Henry Ndubuka, whom you have used to ensure that this conference holds this year in Port Harcourt. We commit him unto your divine care that as he's coming tomorrow, Father, that you grant him journey mercies in the name of Jesus. He will arrive at Port Airport safely and he will join us to start the opening ceremony of this conference. Father, we thank you for the chairman of the Central Planning Committee of this conference, the Right Reverend Dr. Samuel Suwale, and all his committee members. Thank you for using them to plan this conference. We thank you also for the chairman of the local organizing committee, the disgrace, the most reverend Dr. Blessing Inda, with the chairman, the local organizing committee, for using him to ensure that this conference is properly planned and we have started it today. We thank you also, Father, for Right Reverend Dr. Stephen Fagbemi, the chairman, sub-programs and sub-committees. We thank you for the prosecutor and the camp commander of this conference. How you have so faithfully used them and were here. We also commit at this point in time all the speakers in this conference. Those that handle the lectures, those that handle the seminar topics. It is our desire that you give them wisdom, you give them knowledge. They will not speak carnally, they will speak to us. That we that are yet to listen to them, Father, give us a listening ear. Give us an understanding. So that at the end of this conference, no one will go home the same in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, and commit all the clergy that have come for this conference. Father, may you give us the grace to partake in this conference. We also thank you for the choir research we have used. We pray that you give them more strength, give them more voice to sing to your praise and glory. Father, for the host of this conference, the Bishop of the Dallas of Niger Delta North, Father, we commit him before you and his entire clergyman. Lord, uphold him whatsoever he may have used in hosting this conference. Father, may you add it unto him a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. Give him good health, long life. Also the wife, Father Opola, as you go about preparing for the hosting this conference. Lord, we want to thank you as many that are in that, that are not supporting your servant, 
serving in one capacity or the other to ensure that this conference is made a success. Father, we thank you for our brethren who are on their way coming out of the accident. We thank you because none lost their lives. But we pray that you heal them in the name of Jesus. Father, as you heal them, we pray that in this conference, deliver us, protect us, and keep us free and far from everything called COVID-19, cholera, or the Delta variants in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we thank you for this conference. For all that you have done, all I yet to do, even as we go back after this time to our various places of our board, may we sleep peacefully. May we sleep and come back tomorrow morning strong and healthy to conduct this conference. Father, while we are in this service, any that we may have made it, because Father, may you forgive us. But those things we have done according to our will, may they be the source of our blessing. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. Be thou exalted. Blessed be your name, Father. For we are prayed in Jesus' name. Unto God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance and grant you peace. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the holding storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God, I know we shall prevail. Only standing on the promises of God. Hymn number eight, page seventeen.
The Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion presents All Anglican Clergy Conference for Tackle 2021 with the theme Effective Anglican Ministry in the 21st Century. Text 1 Timothy chapters 4 verse 6. Date 24th to 27th August 2021. Venue. St. Paul's Cathedral, Jobu, Potakot, featuring Bible studies, lectures, seminars, and revival sections. Chief host, 